grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And let us pray. God of David's fragile house of hope and expectation, in the time of empires, your word was born to those who have no place and sung to those who watch in the wild. May his birth unsettle our world with hidden glory and untold peace. Through Jesus Christ, the child of promise. Amen.
from St. Matthew, chapter 1, verses 18 through 25. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they had lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Now all this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him. He took Mary as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had born a son, and he named him Jesus. St. Luke, the second chapter. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth 
in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you, this day in the city of David is born a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those whom he favored. When the angels had left them and gone back into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told to them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds had told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying God and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. Without a doubt, Christmas 2020 is unlike any we have experienced in our lives because those of us who are used to being at church are at home every other Christmas. We have had to decide what time we would have to get the family together so that we could get to church. Would we go to the earlier service and have dinner afterwards? Or would we go to the later service and risk falling asleep during the sermon? Now it doesn't matter because you're at home. You could fall asleep during the sermon and I will never know. And all you have to do to remedy the situation is to hit the rewind button. More amazingly, even your pastor's at home. Like many of you, I can't remember a Christmas Eve when I wasn't rushing back and forth to church, being an acolyte at one service, singing in the choir for another, sometimes doing both. It was glorious. I'm sure you've had the same experience. Some of you have been churching on Christmas Eve longer than I have been alive. And believe me, my friends, that is a very long time because I'm old. But this year, things are different. You're home and so am I. It's unlike any Christmas we have ever experienced because we've decided to, as Shepard Smith says, follow the Fauci. Listen to the scientists and the cooler heads, and as much as we would like to be together, to stay at home. It's quite unlike the first Christmas where the Reverend Colin McLeod, who is now the Dean of St. Giles Cathedral in Edinburgh, observed that nobody seemed to be at home. He said in a sermon once, travel weary Joseph and heavenly pregnant Mary journey away from their home in Nazareth to Bethlehem 
the ancestral town of Joseph. Indeed, not only are they not at home, but they don't even find proper shelter for the birth of the child. The angels aren't at home either. They're on the move from heaven, which I guess is their home, to earth to say and sing of the great news and good tidings, to share it with the shepherds, that they might themselves might share it with others. The angels are journeying, coming to earth, what the theologian Philip Yancey calls the visited planet. Shepherds, they're not at home. Of course, they're not even in their usual place in the fields. They too have to make the journey from the fields where the, they are keeping their sheep to find the baby in the stable. After being scared out of their wits by their encounter with the heavenly messengers. So the shepherds take their own journey. And of course, in Matthew's gospel, there are the mysterious magi already on their way, the wise men. They're on the road, away from home, being led by the star to find the new promised king. T.S. Eliot imagined these magi as grumbling and just the worst time of year for a journey and for such a long journey. The way is deep, the weather sharp, the very dead of winter. Indeed, we might say that the Magi's grumbling in that poem, The Journey of the Magi, could be true for any involved in this story, except perhaps Herod and his advisors they were very much at home. And I believe that all this activity and movement and journeying is occasioned because not even God is at home at Christmas. God, the maker of heaven and earth, the creator of all that is, God, whose nature and name is love, is also on a journey at Christmas. God is journeying at Christmas to where you are and I are. That's why I think people who we never see the rest of the year come to church on Christmas and Easter. On Christmas they come to hear that they are not alone. And on Easter they come to hear that this life is not all there is. You and I understand that we need to come to this place more often than a couple of times a year to be reminded that God's great love for us is personal and makes a difference. These are messages that we long to hear, but they are not messages that are easy to hear. Sometimes we have to hear them, strain to hear them, as one man did in one of my favorite Christmas stories. It was written so long ago that it appeared in the Chicago Tribune magazine section, which disappeared from the planet in 2009. It's called Jerry's Last Fair, and it was written by James F. Gardner as a Christmas present to his wife. It's about a cab driver working late on Christmas Eve, who decides to pick up one last passenger before calling it a night. As luck would have it, the guy wanted to go to the airport, but first he had a request. He wanted to pass first through Lincoln Park Zoo. Jerry was not pleased because he had promised his wife that he would be home for midnight mass, and now he was going to miss it. To make matters worse, his passenger wanted to stop and get out for a moment or two at the entrance to the zoo. Jerry had never been robbed, but he knew enough not to get out of his cab at the gate of a deserted zoo close to midnight. 
There's something I always wanted to try, the man began with a sparkle in his eye. There's an old legend about what happens on Christmas Eve, Jerry. Have you heard it? In, in the back of his memory, Jerry thought he had, so before he realized what he was doing, he was out of his cab and standing in the snow. His passenger reminded that the only witnesses to Jesus' birth were the animals gathered around the manger. What they saw was so miraculous that these very same animals and all the animals thereafter were blessed with the gift of speech. So on every Christmas Eve, said Jerry's passenger, if you listen very hard, you can hear the animals talk again. So they stood and they listened. They listened for a very long time until Jerry finally said, I don't hear them. Listen very hard, the man said quietly. Jerry did and replied, nothing. I got nothing. No. Not nothing, Jerry, the man said. There is silence. Listen to the silence. You can't hear the animals or any people. You can't hear the cars. Think of the thousands of people who live within a half a mile or so of where we are standing right now. You can't hear a single one. Jerry paused and let his imagination take him around that half mile or so and then further around into the city, across the Black Lake into the shores of Michigan and Indiana. He smiled and said, it sounds like the whole world is asleep. Asleep? asked his fair. No. Not asleep, said Jerry. You're right. It's like everyone is awake and holding their breath. His fair said, That's the sound of hope, Jerry. It's Christmas Eve, when the Savior of the world was born, but no one is praying. Not in words they think of as a prayer, just hoping with hearts at ease and their eyes filled with wonder. So, Christmas Eve is the time when animals talk and the people shut up, Jerry said with a chuckle. It sure is a beautiful sound. Maybe tonight, as the only journey you make is in your very own home. Maybe tonight as you wend your way for wherever you watch this sermon, be it on your computer or on your television, in the silence, you'll hear the sound of God's love creeping in beside you, bringing healing and hope. And if you do, even if it is only for a second, it sure will be a beautiful sound. And maybe the sound of that silence will only be broken by your memory of the words and the tune of the hymn, the world in solemn stillness lays to hear the angels sing.
Gospel according to John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him, but to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth.
Christ on this Christmas Eve, it has been our care and delight to hear again the message of the angels and in heart and mind to go unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass with Mary his mother, Joseph his earthly father, and with the shepherds and the wise men adore the child lying in his mother's arms. We have read and marked in Holy Scripture the tale of the loving purposes of God from the first days of our disobedience until the glorious redemption brought us to us by this holy child. So now, let us pray for the needs of his whole world, for peace on earth and goodwill over all the earth, for unity and fellowship within the church he came to build and within our nation. And because it would rejoice his heart, let us remember at this time the poor and the helpless, the cold, the hungry and the oppressed, the sick in body and mind, and them that mourn, the lonely and the unloved, the ages and the little children, all who know not the Lord Jesus or who love them not. Lastly, let us remember before God those who rejoice with us, but on another shore and in a greater light, the multitude which no man can number, in whose hope was the word made flesh, with whom in the Lord Jesus we forevermore are one. These prayers and praises let us humbly offer up to the throne of heaven in the words in which Jesus Christ himself hath taught us, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
may he, who by his incarnation gathered into one things earthly and heavenly, fill you with the sweetness of inner peace and goodwill, and the blessing of God Almighty, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you this night and forevermore. Amen.